uninformed, like um, the heathen were. And therefore, that's why Paul said, You Jew, you think you know everything and you call yourself the teacher of those who are untaught. Also, uh, thought they had no big sins. But uh, Paul explained to them that they can't always judge because many times you have the same sins uh, that the heathen Gentiles also have. So um, just be careful. So thankfully, uh, God gives us His Holy Spirit and we can work those sins out of our life. Uh, not that you're going to be completely sinless. It's just a daily walk and you grow as a Christian. And thank God for always working in our lives. So, <clears throat> we're going to look at another sign that Paul performed. Uh, this this is uh, key because this shows to us that Paul uh, was truly an apostle and also shows to us that um, these signs were Jewish. So we're going to Acts chapter 16 and verse 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. So this um, evil devil inside um, this possessed woman uh, uh, caused her to commit the sin of suicide. It continues where um, Paul re replies um, in verse 17. The same followed Paul and us, cried, saying, These men are servants, are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Easily. He used the name of Jesus, said, go out to the Spirit, and it happened. Mark 16 verse 17 says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. It's been prophesied. It was an event that was foreseen by Jesus. Now, um, you might be thinking, these signs doesn't sound so Jewish to you uh, because you think the New Testament nature of signs are somewhat different of the Old Testament nature of signs. And um, uh, you're perplexed. Go to Kings, Second Kings, chapter 4. And um, this chapter opened my eyes regarding the nature of the signs in the Old Testament. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 38. And Elijah and Elisha came again to Gilgal, and there was a dearth in the land, and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him. And he said unto his servant, Sit on the great pot. 
and seeth pottage for the sons of the prophets. So everything is going well. Verse 39. And one went out into the field to gather herbs, and found a wild vine, and gathered thereof wild girds his lap full, and came and shred them into the pot of pottage, for they knew them not. Poisonous herbs and girds. And they're about to eat this pottage. How will God not bring his hand in this situation? Because these are Jews. For them are the signs given. Verse 14. So they poured out the meat to eat. And it came to pass as they were eating the pottage, they cried out. They cried out that they cried out. And said, O thou man of God, there is death in the pot, and they could not eat thereof. Verse 41. But he said, Then bring the meal. And he cast it into the pot. And he said, Pour out for the people, that they may eat. And there was no harm in the pot. So before all these people... If they put this deadly pottage, they saw how a person cried out, Ah, oh, this pottage is terribly poisonous and we can't eat of it. It says they weren't able to eat of it. In fact, it says they thought there were, was like death in the pot. They wanted to avoid it like the plague. You know, in the old days they wanted to avoid the black plague because it was death. And here they have this food. And Elijah says, eat up. So they ate. <laughs> and this reminds me of a verse in Matthew 16, verse 18. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink, any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Exactly the same thing. Frightening, but it's the same thing. And verse 42, same chapter in Kings. And there came a man from Baal Shalesha and brought the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, and full ears of corn in the husk thereof. And he said, Give unto the people that they may eat. And his servitor said, What? Should I set this before an hundred men? And he said again, Give the people that they may eat. For thus saith the Lord, they shall eat, and shall leave thereof. If this is not familiar, then um, I would like you to introduce to you our Savior, who multiplied bread. He did it twice. First the, seven, uh, first the five loaves and then the seven loaves for the multitudes. Verse 44 So he set it before them and they did eat and left thereof according to the word of the Lord. And 
this is how the word of the Lord works. It gives the Jews the insight to know when something will happen. And of course this is prophetic. Because he says, they shall eat and leave thereof. The atonement that Jesus made was so wonderful that nobody in the world can have so much sin that the blood of Christ wouldn't be enough to clean him. That's why it says they shall leave thereof. The bread is a symbol of Christ's suffering and his body that he gave. So uh, no matter what the situation is, there will always be a bit of bread left. <coughs> now, <clears throat> except for this being wonderful, exciting, and great, I'm going to um, go through a set of scriptures that talk about the Jews signs <clears throat> in Exodus 4 uh, verse 4 there's taking up of serpents um, there's recovering from sickness in Exodus 4 verse 7 2 Kings 5 verse 10 to 14 2 Kings 20 to 7 speaking in tongues in Exodus 4 verse 12 people <laughs> bringing they're being spared from poison, 2 Kings 2, verse 19 to 22, 2 Kings 4, verse 38 to 41, restoring the deceased to life, 1 Kings 17, verse 17 to 23, 2 Kings 4, verse 32 to 37, 2 Kings 13, verse 21, multiplication of food, 1 Kings 17 verse 9 to 16, 2 Kings 4 verse 42 to 44. The opening of eyes, 2 Kings 6 verse 17 and 22. And the calming of the sea, Jonah 1 verse 15. And the Sabbath was also a sign, Exodus 31 verse 12. Ever wondered why we don't keep the Sabbath? You can keep it if you want to, but it's Jewish. It's a beautiful thing, but it won't take you to heaven. Only the blood of Christ can take you to heaven. It's what every person in the world needs for salvation. The blood of Christ. <coughs> so, I think there's two questions that a person can ask himself regarding these signs. When was the first time that word sign, singular, is mentioned in the Bible? And when was the first time that somebody in the Bible got healed instantly? Same chapter. That's awesome and that should excite any person. Let's go and see what happens there. It's in Exodus chapter 4 and to understand the context, I'm going to explain to you what the context is, but I don't actually need to um, give the, all the words myself because there is places in the New Testament that gives the context of that time frame. So we're going to Acts and chapter 22. Just be patient, we'll get to Exodus in a moment. 
Acts chapter 7 and verse 22. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him, and avenged him, avenged him that was oppressed, and smote the Egyptian. Uh, and people would be wondering, oh, Moses killed somebody, he was sinning greatly. Not exactly. Uh, it says, it came into his heart to visit his br brethren. So he knew the Jews were his brothers. Even before he went to the Jews, and it came into his heart. In your heart is the treasure of your um, good thoughts and your um, in your heart um, God works. So um, why would it come into his heart to go to his brothers? Because he truly had a concern for his brothers. Let's go to Hebrews 11 verse 23. Uh, 24, sorry. But, Hebrews 11 verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So, here Moses chooses not to be called the son of of the Pharaoh's daughter because he simply wasn't her biological son he was the biological son of a Jew Wes and for him to lie would be a sin and this kept a lot of uh, pleasures away from him and uh, also, the Egyptians uh, were probably sinful people in that time frame, so um, he also couldn't uh, commune so much with them and be in communion with the um, Egyptians the whole time. Because as a Christian, uh, after a while you'll realize that uh, it's not easy to commune with uh, sinful people because it's vexing and um, you're in serious risk of sinning yourself. Uh, it's not really a good th uh, thing to be around sinful people all the time. Um, if you're not having any problems with that as a Christian, um, there are some scriptures um, I can refer you to, but that's a study for another time. Um, but evangelize the lost. That's always a good thing. Keep on doing that, but um, uh, don't uh, vex yourself and influence yourself uh, immensely by the lost world. Uh, it might lead to uh, filling your heart with dark things and uh, your light, your eye is the light of your soul so uh, shine some light inside here so the heart can be touched by some sun and flashlight if you're using a flashlight. We're going to um, act 7 again no, we're continuing in Acts 11, uh, no, Hebrews 11, uh, from verse 26, he says, Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. And these riches of Christ was the reality that God promised 
Abraham some land and that God promised Abraham that there will be kings ruling over the land. So Moses knew full well about the land and the kings that was prophesied, that was going to be there for the future. Uh, so this is why it says the reproach of Christ. So this gives a brand new perspective on what exactly was going through Moses' mind. He was suffering for the promise that was given to Abram, for the reality that a Christ should rule over these Jews in the land. He wasn't going to cause it like being a god being able to cause these prophecies to come into fulfillment but because um, he loved his nation and um, he longed for the promises of God to come into fulfillment because it's always a good thing to share the heart of God always Verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense, recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who was invisible. So it took faith from Moses to leave Egypt. He knew their court systems. He knew how he could have um, defended himself in that area. But he also knew that God um, needed to preserve him. So it wouldn't be that wise to be inside a prison uh, because uh, he, believed, he believed that uh, in some way, uh, God wants the people inside the promised land and He was desiring to lead and help them that way because it was free and this Jewish um, family, they were slaves. Um, the only hope his Jew uh, Jewish family had uh, was in Moses, in the same way we were slaves in sin and our only hope is in the free son because he never was a slave of sin Jesus, our Savior so let's go to Acts again and we'll just go over that whole part from the beginning from verse 22 and Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him. So here was Moses, the only person that's able to defend the Jews and this um, Egyptian which God calls worms and dogs is terribly mistreating a Jew and even though that Egyptian might have had some authority and thought nothing about the Jew. Moses could not stand still. He had to, what it says, it says, avenge what was happening over there. And by avenging, God illustrates that it was just. 
because um, when it's not just, uh, just um, then it's usually called something like revenge, but here it's avenge. Him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. Um, sadly, the Egyptian died, um, and Moses hit the Egyptian uh, in this Jewish area where the Jews were because they dwelt in Goshen. Uh, so if somebody saw Moses, it probably would have been a Jew. So it's not the most unsafe place to hide the Egyptian. <coughs> Verse 25 For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. The question is, who told all the other Jews? It might have been that same Jew that he saved because Moses, he looked around and saw nobody. But that Jew knew that Moses killed the Egyptian. And so, um, in the same way, Jesus was killed for our sins. And the Jews knew of Jesus' righteousness. But they still rejected Him. So, at your workplace, if you know about somebody's righteousness, are you still going to stab him in the back? Look at what you do and have some wisdom.